the history of Hollywood is a tale shrouded in glitz, glamour, and shadows. An intoxicating dream spun from silver screens and velvet curtains, where fame glittered like gold and secrets whispered through studio hallways like ghosts. In the 1950s, Hollywood was a world unto itself, a tightly controlled kingdom ruled by a handful of powerful studios where the Hollywood dream promised the ultimate escape. Picture it, towering sound stages, massive backlots with fake cityscapes, and gleaming studio gates that opened into a paradise where the unknown could become stars overnight. But behind the blinding camera flashes and lavish premieres, the system was built on a foundation of control, manipulation, and, some would say, illusion. Studio heads were like monarchs, dictating every aspect of a star's life, from their screen personas to their relationships, crafting and polishing them until they shimmered with perfection. Actors were bound by long-term contracts, often trapped in roles that fit their studio-made image, whether they liked it or not. For many, the Hollywood dream was a double-edged sword, offering fame in exchange for personal freedom. Beneath the surface, there were darker currents, whispers of deals made in smoky rooms, careers ruined by blacklists during the Red Scare, and untold secrets involving the rich and powerful. Scandals were meticulously buried, disappearances explained away, and behind every star was the lurking question, what price are they paid for their fame? Conspiracies festered in the cracks, from mysterious deaths of beloved icons to rumors of hidden alliances between Hollywood's elite and political power brokers. The Hollywood of the 1950s was a place where reality and fantasy intertwined so deeply that even now, it's difficult to tell where one ended and the other began. It was sure indeed a dazzling realm of glamour and fame, where the allure of the silver screen concealed deep currents of secrecy and control. Amid this world of illusions, no figure captured the beauty, mystery, and ultimate tragedy of the Hollywood dream, quite like Marilyn Monroe, whose life remains shrouded in intrigue. In today's episode of Pastime Mysteries, we are going to take a deep dive into Marilyn's life before fame, during fame, and the events leading up to her unfortunate and bizarre death. If you haven't already, subscribe for more videos just like this. One of the most famous stars in Hollywood history is dead at 36. Marilyn Monroe was found dead in bed under circumstances that were in tragic contrast to her glamorous career as a comic talent. On the surface, she seemed to have such a zest for life. Her international appeal took her from command appearances to the other side of the world and entertainment for Korean GIs. The star led a far from normal childhood and had 12 sets of foster parents, leading her to say in her last interview that she was never used to being happy, so it wasn't something she ever took for granted. She never let her personal feelings interfere with her job, and she was the idol of the GIs, the animation of Foxhole Dreams. She found no happiness in marriage. Her second husband was baseball immortal Joe DiMaggio. That marriage ended as had her first in divorce. Her third husband was playwright Arthur Miller, and they too separated. Miss Monroe played in 23 films since her debut in 1950, films that grossed $200 million. The Golden Girl received 5,000 fan letters a week, and to those fans, she never let any personal problems dim her screen glamour. Despite flashes of temperament and tantrums, she turned in performances that kept her among the greatest box office favorites in motion picture history. Before she became the iconic Marilyn Monroe, captivating millions with her allure, she was simply Norma Jean, an ordinary girl with an extraordinary destiny waiting in the shadows. 
The story of Marilyn Monroe begins not in the blinding lights of Hollywood, but in the quiet, unremarkable world of Norma Jean Mortensen. Born on June 1, 1926, in a small charity ward at the Los Angeles County Hospital, Norma Jean's first breath was drawn under the weight of anonymity. The bustling city around her paid no attention to the tiny infant with deep brown curls and wide, curious eyes. At that moment, no one could have imagined that she would one day become Marilyn Monroe, the embodiment of glamour, fame, and mystery. Norma Jean's early life was far from the shimmering image of stardom she would later project to the world. Her childhood was turbulent, marked by instability and a haunting sense of loneliness that seemed to follow her like a shadow. Her mother, Gladys Baker, struggled with severe mental health issues, and as a result, Norma Jean was placed in a series of foster homes. These were not the kinds of homes filled with warmth and love. They were more like way stations, places of temporary shelter where she felt like an outsider, always searching for a sense of belonging. In fact, by the time she turned 16, she had lived in more than 10 different homes, often feeling like a transient in her own life. There's a particular image, a young Norma Jean sitting by a window, her gaze lost in the distance, dreaming of something more, of a life beyond the four walls of her foster homes, beyond the suffocating reality that had been handed to her. Even at a young age, she carried a fragile sense of self-worth, constantly questioning whether she was worthy of love, stability, or happiness. These early years left deep emotional scars that would follow her throughout her life, hidden beneath the gleaming facade of the Hollywood starlet she would become. At age 16, desperate for an escape from the foster system, Norma Jean married James Doherty, a young factory worker. It was a practical marriage, one more about survival than love, and it provided her with some stability. But stability wasn't what Norma Jean craved. She yearned for something more, for recognition, for a life that would finally make her feel seen. While James was away serving in World War II, Norma Jean found work in a munitions factory. It was there, among the machinery and the roar of factory life, that fate intervened. A photographer spotted her and suggested she try modeling. With this, the first glimmer of the Hollywood dream sparked to life. By 1946, Norma Jean had transformed herself into Marilyn Monroe, a new name, a new persona, and most importantly, a new beginning. She dyed her hair platinum blonde, shed the girl next door look, and became the living embodiment of allure. Hollywood took notice, and soon, she was being cast in small roles that would eventually lead to stardom. Films like All About Eve and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes propelled her into the spotlight, and before long, Marilyn Monroe was a household name. But even as her star rose, the woman behind the icon, Norma Jean, struggled to keep her balance in a world that had little concern for her inner turmoil. To the world, Marilyn was perfection personified. Her image was that of a carefree, sultry blonde who radiated beauty and charm. Men adored her, women envied her, and directors clamored to work with her. But behind the scenes, Marilyn was often overwhelmed by insecurity and doubt. She feared she wasn't taken seriously as an actress, worried that she was seen as nothing more than a pretty face. She often clashed with studio executives over the roles she was offered, yearning for more complex, meaningful characters that would allow her to prove her worth as a performer. Yet, Hollywood's golden age had little interest in revealing the depth behind the beauty, and Marilyn found herself pigeonholed 
into the same roles again and again. Her personal life, too, was far from the fairy tale the public imagined. Marilyn was married three times, first to James Doherty, then to baseball legend Joe DiMaggio, and finally to playwright Arthur Miller. Her marriage to DiMaggio, while initially passionate, quickly soured. DiMaggio was uncomfortable with her public persona, particularly her infamous subway great scene in The Seven Year Itch, where her white dress billowed up in the wind. Their relationship was fraught with jealousy and control, and it wasn't long before they divorced. With Arthur Miller, Marilyn found a partner who could offer her the intellectual stimulation she craved. But even this relationship was not without its struggles. Miller, it seemed, could not fully understand the depth of her emotional wounds, and their marriage, too, would end in heartbreak. As Marilyn's personal life spiraled, rumors began to surface about her relationships with powerful men, rumors that would later fuel some of the most enduring conspiracies surrounding her death. It was said that Marilyn had been romantically involved with President John F. Kennedy, as well as his brother, Attorney General Robert Kennedy. These alleged affairs placed Marilyn in a precarious position, one that, if true, could have had catastrophic consequences for the Kennedy family. Many believe that it was her connection to the Kennedys that ultimately led to her untimely demise. On August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was found dead in her Brentwood home, her life cut short at the age of 36. The official cause of death was ruled as an overdose of barbiturates, but from the moment her body was discovered, questions began to arise. Why had it taken so long for the authorities to be notified? Why were there discrepancies in the accounts of those who were present that night? And what of the missing personal effects? Her diary, phone records, and other belongings that had seemingly vanished in the days following her death? For many, the idea that Marilyn Monroe's death was a simple overdose seemed too convenient, too neatly packaged, Speculation grew, and conspiracy theories began to take hold. Some believed that Marilyn had been silenced by the Kennedys, that she knew too much, perhaps about their involvement with organized crime or other politically damaging secrets. The theory goes that Marilyn, feeling scorned and abandoned, had threatened to go public with what she knew, and in a desperate bid to protect their careers, the Kennedys had orchestrated her death, making it look like an accidental overdose. Another theory suggests that Marilyn had been caught in a web of blackmail involving powerful figures in both the government and organized crime. The Mafia, it was rumored, had used her as a pawn in their dealings with the Kennedys, and when she became a liability, they eliminated her. This theory paints Marilyn as a tragic figure, ensnared in a dangerous game of power and deceit that she could never have hoped to escape. Adding to the mystery are the reports of Marilyn's final hours. It is said that she made several phone calls that night, one of which was to Robert Kennedy, pleading for his help. Others claim that Robert Kennedy himself was in Los Angeles that evening and may have even visited Marilyn's home. Witnesses reported seeing a helicopter hovering near her residence, and there were rumors of secret visits by the police and political operatives. But these accounts are as fragmented and elusive as the truth itself, leaving behind only more questions than answers. Despite multiple investigations over the years, no definitive proof has ever emerged to support the idea of foul play, but the cloud of suspicion surrounding Marilyn Monroe's death has never fully lifted. To this day, her life and death remain one of Hollywood's most enduring mysteries, an unsolved puzzle that continues to captivate the public's imagination. 
In many ways, Marilyn Monroe's story is a reflection of Hollywood itself, a world of illusion, where reality and fantasy blur, and where the truth is often hidden behind a glittering veneer. She was the ultimate Hollywood star, but she was also a deeply fragile woman, haunted by her past and undone by the very fame that made her a legend. Her life was a tragic paradox, one where the dream of stardom became a waking nightmare, and her untimely death only deepened the intrigue that had always surrounded her. Even now, more than half a century after her passing, Marilyn Monroe remains an enigma. Her beauty, her talent, and her undeniable presence have made her an immortal figure in popular culture. But the true story of her life, the woman behind the icon, may forever remain in the shadows, locked away with the secrets that Hollywood keeps so well. Whether she was the victim of a sinister conspiracy or simply a woman overwhelmed by her inner demons, Marilyn Monroe's life was a journey into the heart of darkness, where fame, power, and tragedy converged in a perfect storm of mystery. And so, as we look back on the life of Marilyn Monroe, we are left with more questions than answers. Who was she? What did she know? And in the end, was she simply another casualty of Hollywood's relentless pursuit of perfection? Or something far more complicated? An unwitting participant in a dangerous game that cost her everything? The answers, like Marilyn herself, may forever remain just out of reach. <laughs>